Welcome, Dr. Garbo Matei, um, from the both of us at Narayana Publishing. Welcome, Mr. Matei. So nice to see you. We are so happy and grateful that you're taking the time to sit down and talk with us today. We at Narayana are absolutely thrilled and proud to be your German publishers. And it's an absolute honor to share your extraordinary work and your much thought out expertise with our readers. And we deeply appreciate the unique and groundbreaking work that you do and share with the world. And we're excited and happy for this opportunity to introduce you to our readers via video as well now today, um, as well as through the books. Okay. In, um, for a long time, I wanted to get published in Germany and it's been, took a long time, but I'm so grateful it's finally happened. Yes, okay. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So um, some words for those who don't you as well. You are physician, therapist, best-selling author, and you're one of the leading experts in the world about relationship between stress and disease, addiction, trauma, and childhood development. We already published three of your internationally successful books, When the Body Says No, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, and Scattered Minds. And we are currently working on the German edition of Hold On to Your Kids, which will be published in next summer. So, um, one of your best-selling books is When the Body Says No. Uh, in this book, you demonstrate how deep emotional stress and trauma can negatively affect us and even cause diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease and other serious illness. Uh, you are using the term mind-body link um, to describe this. Could you please dis um, explain us how the special connection between body and mind works? It's so obvious. It's so simple. If I was, I'm talking to you right now and you're in Deutschland and I'm here in Canada, but even if I raised my voice and started to speak in a hostile way to you, your body would change. Your muscles would get tense. Your nervous system would get um, agitated. Your heart rate would go up. Your blood pressure would go up. The hormones in your body would change. The blood flow to your intestines would um, diminish so that more blood could go to your muscles. In other words, if I stressed you, if I made you afraid, if I upset you, your whole, whole body would change. Why? Because you felt fear. And that fear or that anger, whatever you felt, would immediately show up in your body. So to say that the body and the mind are connected is obvious. And this connection doesn't just happen when we're upset. It's 24 hours, seven days a week. Our body and minds are connected. In fact, our body and minds are not even connected because even to say that they're connected, it's like there's two separate things connected to each other, but they're not two separate things. It's body-mind. It's one unit. This isn't news. Um, human beings have intuited this for thousands of years. So the traditional medicinal practices of people around the world and the Qi medicine of China or the Ayurvedic medicine of India, for example, or indigenous medicines around the world have always made this, they knew this. They didn't have the science that we have. Yeah. We have the science. And unfortunately, our science, brilliant as it is, and as revolutionary and beneficial it has been in the West, we have separated the mind from the body. So mm -hmm. medical practitioners, for the most part, learn about the body as a biological um, entity, as a biological thing, but we don't learn about the connections or the unity of the mind and the body. So the fact is that because the mind and body are one unit, and I could tell you the details. I mean, the details are fascinating, but I don't want to go into too much um, detail about it. Yes. yes. The nervous system connects all the parts of the body and the, and the brain together. The mm -hmm. emotional centers in the brain are connected with the heart, with the bone marrow, with the hormonal centers, the thyroid gland in the neck, the 
ovaries, the testes, you know, where we make the sex hormones, the mm -hmm. adrenal gland, these are all connected. Um, the gut is connected to the brain. So that whenever happens something emotionally, whenever something happens emotionally, that affects the whole body. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first point. So what happens emotionally then is that um, when anything emotional happens, it is a physical manifestation. When our emotions are suppressed, we're actually suppressing our bodies. So that, um, let's say a child is brought up in a home where they're forbidden to be angry. You can't be angry. An angry child, you have to go and sit by yourself in another room if you're angry. All right, now anger is a very healthy emotion. It's a very necessary emotion. Mm -hmm. If I were to attack you, like, you know, insult you, you should be angry. That anger would help you to say, no, stop it. Yes. Now, out there in nature, no creature survives without anger. Mm -hmm. and evolved as human beings, anger, which is just, no, this is my boundary, stay away. That's, that's what healthy anger is. That was necessary for survival. When we are made to suppress our anger, to be accepted by our parents, mm -hmm. then we suppress the anger, not deliberately, mm -hmm. not consciously, but automatically, because we have to stay in relationship with our parents. Mm -hmm. so then we suppress our anger, that actually suppresses our immune system. Because the immune system, when you think about it, mm -hmm. what's the job of the immune system? Is to keep out what's not healthy and to let in what's healthy. That's what the immune mm -hmm. system does. Mm -hmm. What's the job of the emotions? Is to keep out what's not healthy, mm -hmm. it's to let in what's, what's nourishing. Mm -hmm. The two are connected. We're suppressing the one, we're suppressing the other. Mm -hmm. So when people do this chronically, which some people do because of the way they were programmed in childhood, they're forever suppressing themselves, which creates a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Stress leads to illness. That's, it's a lot of information, but that's it in a, in a small summary, actually. Yes, okay. And uh, what do you think? Um, what was the reason? Why um, did it change once? Why do you think this shift in mindset has occurred um, to um, look at um, the body and mind um, to separate it? That's a good question. Um, it really begins not just with medicine, but it begins with the whole Western way of thinking. Okay. Around the time of the Industrial Revolution uh, and the rise of modern science, this mind-body split starts showing up more and more. So Rene Descartes says, you know, I think, therefore I am, you know, so that uh, the mind somehow is in charge, you know, and, and um, so this split uh, characterizes Western thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's good economic and political reasons for that, because once you get, um, once you get a materialistic system like capitalism, which is based purely on The only value is money. The only value is uh, uh, profit, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and the value is more and more materialism. And so I'm not romanticizing feudalism. I'm not romanticizing ancient slavery. You know, they all have their yes. problems. Yes. But they didn't split the mind and body quite the way we do. Yes, okay. Okay. And with the rise of modern materialistic industrialism, you get this mind-body split. It, okay. becomes all, it becomes all about matter. And, 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 and medicine, we like to think of medicine as a science, which has got powerful and important scientific aspect, but it's also an ideology. And as an ideology, it reflects the ideology of the entire system. So that's why it started happening, I think. Yes, okay. So these are many um, social reasons. Um, what do you think? Could we change? What, what should change in our um, 
social living together that people could be much more free and also children can learn to be to live much more light-hearted not so burdened to be healthy people what do you think yeah well the, the first thing i think and i just need to say this is that what i'm saying is not philosophy what i'm mm -hmm. saying is science so that the link between the mind and the body and the many many links in fact the unity has yes. been demonstrated in tens of thousands of scientific papers published mm -hmm. in major journals uh so it's not like i'm speaking about something secret mm -hmm. what's interesting is that despite all the science that's been published in major medical journals certainly in english and i'm i've seen lots of german studies as well uh international studies the problem in medicine is not that we're not scientific the problem not it's not that we're, we're, we're too scientific the problem is we're not scientific enough yeah we don't actually look at the science that's already been published so what i'm so now i just wanted to put that out there just in case people think i'm creating something new here i'm just telling you what the science shows now you asked your question well first of all people would have to be educated about the way it is so physicians would have to be educated in the science Mm -hmm. not in the narrow sense but in the broad sense you know um what would have to happen well if we understood the mind body unity then our here's a lot of research that has shown that the stresses on a pregnant woman mm -hmm. are transferred to the baby so when the mother is pregnant the stress hormones adrenaline and cortisol which come from the adrenal gland on top of the kidney, they are moved through the placenta, the umbilical cord to the baby. And that affects the baby's brain development. Wow, that yeah. really... So if, one of the, if we wanted to have healthy children, we would really take care of pregnant mothers, mm -hmm. give them lots of support, so that the prenatal visit wouldn't just be about blood pressure and weight and blood sugar and ultrasounds and blood tests it would also be about how are you doing emotionally mm -hmm. what kind of support are you getting how is your relationship with your partner mm -hmm. what kind of work are you doing mm -hmm. what's it like on your job mm -hmm. you know, and all these things would in other words we would just look at the whole picture mm -hmm. and in terms of childhood we would look at not just the child's physical needs for nourishment and shelter and education but also their emotional needs mm -hmm. now a couple of my books which you're publishing we talk i talk a lot about child development in a new book that i'm just writing that'll be i just finished writing mm -hmm. that'll be published next year i spent a whole section on human development but the point mm -hmm. is if we understood the mind body unity we would really make sure that our children are not suppressed yes that, that they know what they feel and that they know how to express their emotions in a healthy way so that um when a child gets angry a two-year-old gets angry we say oh you're angry we wouldn't say go to your room yeah <laughs> that's a good example well you've mentioned um emotions a lot and while reading your books i and i know my colleague as well were very fascinated and impressed by your ability to weave your own um experience as and your own feelings into what you're writing and to show vulnerability in that way um in a society that often shuns emotions and looks down upon those who show their own vulnerability um, how can you be such an authentic person in this environment and maybe what can we all learn from that and how can we all open ourselves up again without it affecting us so negatively? So, so here's the thing about vulnerability. Uh, the word vulnerability comes from a Latin, vulnerare, to wound. Okay, and Human beings are, are profoundly vulnerable uh, from um, conception to death. The question is, are we aware of our vulnerability? And when we make ourselves invulnerable by not looking at our emotions, we can't grow. 
Now, nothing in nature grows without vulnerability. If you look at where a tree grows, a tree doesn't grow where it's hard and thick. It grows where it's soft and green and vulnerable. An animal like a crab cannot grow in the shell. It has to mold, leave the shell and be very soft and vulnerable. Otherwise, it doesn't grow. Human beings, human beings also don't grow when they're not vulnerable. Now, when children are treated in such a way that they have to protect themselves from the vulnerability by becoming very hard and shut down. You know what the extreme example is? Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. That was somebody mm -hmm. horribly hurt, became totally rigid and vulnerable. Yes. And look what happened. You know, I'm just reading his biography. There's a new biography by, uh, by a wonderful German writer called um, Volker Ulrich. And I'm just, oh, I'm just okay. reading his biography. And uh, it, it really shows how this, sh you know, so I'm saying is that the opposite of vulnerability is rigidity. Okay. So, and then when you're rigid, you're kind of protected, but you can't grow. Yes. Now, what I've learned is not just through my medical work and through my research, it's also been through my own experience. So as a, as a person and as a parent, mm -hmm. and, you know, being a, I was an infant in Hungary in 1944, when, yes. the, when the Wehrmacht marched into Budapest mm -hmm. and I was two months of age. And then Adolf Eichmann came to Budapest and, and you know what happened in that country. And so I had a very tough first year of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wounded. Any infant would be emotionally wounded. And we develop all these protections against woundedness. Um, so one, um, one protection for me because I really got the message that the world didn't want me. And not that I knew anything about Hitler or Nazis, but my mother was so unhappy and so terrified. And infants take that personally. So I get the message. And then when I was one year of age, she gave me to a stranger in the street to save my life. And I didn't see her for six weeks. Mm -hmm. What message do I get? I get the message that the world doesn't want me. Okay. Now, how do you deal with not being wanted? First, by not feeling your emotions, because it's too mm -hmm. painful. So you get disconnected from your body. Mm -hmm. Pushing down your emotions. What's the word for pushing down in English? It's depression. Yes. So I, I became depressed. Mm -hmm. If you look at my pictures as a child, it's a very depressed looking kid much of the time. Okay. Then if the world doesn't want you, then you work really hard so that the world will want you. Well, if you want to, if you want the world to want you, here's what you do. You go to medical school and now they're going to want you all the time. They're going to want you when they're being born, when they're dying and all of that. So, so you become addicted to, to, to work, prove, yes. proving your worth. Yes. Yes. All that, that depression, that shutting down of emotion, that addiction to work, for example, then creates more problems in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in my parenting, because, you know, and, and like, for example, one of the things that children need is play. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a circuit in our brain that's just designed for play. You know who has it? Cats have it. Dogs have it. Monkeys have it. Lions have it. Bears have it. Human beings have it. Mm -hmm. Play is an important part of development. Now, when I was an infant, Nobody played with me. Mm -hmm. It was just too terrible. When my children were born, I didn't know how to play with them. Okay. My brothers, who were born under very different circumstances, they knew how to play with the infants. I didn't. Not that I didn't okay. love them. So I'm saying is, all these problems from childhood then showed up in my adult life, and they created difficulties. So... I had to learn to deal with them. I had to go into therapy and, 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 and why am I this way? Do I have to, you know, here I'm a successful doctor and, and I was writing a newspaper column for Canada's biggest newspaper and I was the head of a hospital department. 
and I'm depressed and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. My children are troubled. My marriage is stressed. Mm -hmm. I, I had to start thinking, well, what's going on here? So I, I had to learn about myself. And what I learned about myself, I also learned about my patients. And so putting the two together, uh, my own education wasn't just through medical school and through research and medical practice. It was also having to do my own work. Now, once mm -hmm. I found that out, mm -hmm. I saw no reason not to share that with people because I wanted people to know here's how it works. And, and, and there's nothing to be ashamed about. This is just what happens to human beings. And mm -hmm. this is what happened to me. And this is, how I'm, this is what I'm learning. And I want to share with you what I'm learning. So that's... Mm -hmm.